Hi, Buck. Oh, wait, one second. Hi, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kate. <laughs> nice to meet you, friend. It's so lovely to meet you. And thank you so much for uh, agreeing to talk to me. I, I really do appreciate it. You're clearly someone Excellent. who supports small creators, which is very kind. Oh, well, because I was a small creator. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of straddling that next level right now. But yeah, I know yeah. how. But, you know, I, I also want to let you know, um, honestly, even since my career, whatever you want to call it, I've always felt that if someone's asking you to be on their show, no matter how many followers they have, you should look at that as a compliment and an honor. I don't care if you have one follower. It's the fact that you, that you are interested in what I have to say and who knows who's following you and that they could, you know what I mean? So they could actually give to somebody else. So, so for me, it's always about the fact that you asked me. And I think that just, um, for me, that says a lot about you and it means you care about what's happening in the world today. So that, that I just want to put that out there. And that means a lot to me. Well, I I do care a lot about this issue um, in the same way that I think a lot of people like myself care. So I'm a I'm female, born female, presumably always will be. But I uh, I'm a, as a young person, I live in a very liberal space. Mm -hmm. So this is all around me. And as someone yeah. who can't relate to it personally, I just want to know from as many perspectives as possible yeah. uh, what's going on so that I can be someone who's informed uh someone who can be an ally but also right. someone who's not a pushover <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's hard to get the balance right well of course it is because you have so many crazy people out there misrepresenting what trans is and you know i i per, i'm i'm with you friend so can you imagine i'm a trans person and i feel exactly how you feel i'm confused i don't know what they're talking about I don't even know what they want. And also it's a huge misrepresentation of what trans really is. And I and I'm also just want to know why they're so mad. Why are they so mad at everybody? And how do they expect people to do what you and I are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Having a conversation, whatever that means. And you might agree with me, you might not. And then we just move forward. Why? So wh I don't know why they can't do that. And so that's to me a red flag. That's a huge red flag of of what is it that they are really trying to achieve? Because it's not this. Yeah. It's not this. This to me, this is a transsexual person. That's mm -hmm. all that is, is my medical condition. It's not my identity and it's not my personality, if, if that makes sense. Because the, the way I was actually introduced to you, you weren't someone on my radar at all until mm -hmm. a YouTuber I follow called ContraPoints did oh. her video on being canceled. And then obviously yeah. I learned quite a lot about you then, but I was yeah. just so perplexed by that. I think we, we could both agree just how absurd that whole situation was. Uh, uh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> she was my friend, I thought, right? And, and she's the one who asked me to go on her show and read a 20 second piece yeah. from John Waters. And it was a very, like just nothing thing. And yeah. next thing you know, all her followers were calling me, calling her out for having me on that I'm a transphobe and blah, blah, blah. It turned into a total crap show. And I was like, what? And then she turned on me and I was like, because she was more concerned about her followers than she was about actually being real and being honest and being completely factual. She turned on me because she was more worried about the, you know her space in the world yeah i think it's such a shame, shame because she's so she's so intelligent and i she do is. love her videos so like she, she didn't have to go down that route she didn't and i you know i i don't know why she went well what i just said but also it just says a lot to about her to me and i don't i don't have people like that in my life like you were allowed to disagree with me but you can't throw me under the bus and think like, it's going to be okay she threw me right under the bus and i was like what we were going to have coffee and hang out and next thing you know she was just like saying all kinds of actually insane things about me that have nothing like i just was blown away she made a 360 on me anyway it just says a lot about her as a person i think yeah. she's an intelligent human being no doubt about that i will never not say that but i don't particularly think she has integrity at all i think she's has that other sort of i'm worried about what people think about me but, but yeah it says a lot about the culture right that like you could just have buck angel on a video for 20 seconds that literally like a two-hour video and then by the end of it you feel suicidal because of the backlash you get from that 
<laughs> that's the effect you have on people, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing I got out of that. I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right because if those <laughs> crazy people went after, you know, it's the non-binary people because I push back on them. Non-binary is not trans. Non-binary is, is non-binary. I don't know yeah. why they were. They're nothing like me. I didn't mm. choose this. I didn't choose. This is not an identity. This is a medical condition that I deal with on a daily basis. And those people are making a mockery out of my condition, which I do not appreciate, nor do other people like me appreciate. We struggle in this world, whether or not I, my 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 face is happy and I'm a happy person, but it's still a struggle to live in, in this space. And I, I find it very offensive that these people think they can just be non-binary and trans and like push me out of the picture. I'm like, uh, wait a minute here, man. Cause I'm not that dude. Right. Yeah. I have Scottish roots. Oh, <laughs> all Americans say that. All Americans I, but I actually, that. my grandfather is literally from Edinburgh. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm, oh, okay. my grandfather is, I know you're right. We do. We all come from <laughs> Ireland and Scotland, but my actual grandparents are Irish and Scottish. So oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like literally that's not that far you had away. a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you are hundred percent right. <laughs> We it's drink. Your granddad's fault. <laughs> it's telling my who died of alcoholism. By oh the way. shit! All oh, right, we're, I know it sucks. Really <laughs> he <sorry>. did. <laughs> but, but he moved to America. He moved to actually Winnipeg, Canada, right where my, my father was born. Yeah, so he went from Scotland to Canada to Winnipeg. Had, had my had my father, and then uh, moved back to Scotland. And my grandmother is from Ireland. Uh, but sad story, um, he crashed the car with my grandmother in it and Easy. killed her. Yeah. He killed my grandma drunk. Like what? Yeah. That's my, that's my family history. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're about as fucked up as the rest of us. Scott, totally. Then. But my point being is go ahead. I got I mean, the spirit in me. <laughs> you know, when you were saying about like, I struggled for this, blah, blah, blah. It, sorry, well, not blah, 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 dismissively. No, but no, what I, you I hear doing, you. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you, but I, I do also have to say that is literally what women say when trans people talk about women in their spaces. Not all women, of course, no, but some course. women. So yeah. you've got this um, perception that like you belong to a category that others don't. But do you understand to an extent that, you know, some people feel that same way about you and, and that they might be yeah. wrong? Yes, how open to How open are you to the fact that you could be wrong? Well, I mean, I can only, I can't be wrong in my own journey. So, yeah. so I think when I'm speaking, I mostly try to speak from my own space, right? I can't speak for others, but what I can say is that as a transsexual and being around other transsexuals, we all have huge, we have all a very much of, of a defining factor that takes us away from the rest of this trans space. And that being that we all accept that we have a mental disorder and we all accept our biology and we all accept that we tried to live this way as long as we could, but we could not. So so that being said, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm wrong in the sense of my own feeling of how I feel towards the world. And my, you have to remember how long I've been on this journey. Yeah. I didn't just start yesterday or even five or even 10 years ago. I've been doing it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the fact that I have a long history of my transition that has worked out amazing for me, you can't not look at that, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I can understand why people wouldn't think things like what I do are real or whatever, but you also have to look at people like myself who have transitioned 30 years ago and who have made a huge effort to coexist with you. I say it all the time. I don't want to be against you, friend. I want to be with you. I want to be in all the same places as you. I want to participate in the world. I don't want to be separate from the world. That's the problem that new trans agenda has done. It's separated from me and you, and I don't want to be separate from you. I want to coexist. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Like, I'm not sure to, when I'm analyzing it, I'm not sure to what extent that's a transgenderism thing, a, a, a transgender activism thing, or if it's just yeah. a generational activism thing in general. You know, like a I lot think of, both. you know, both. like a lot of feminist yeah. suffragettes would be perplexed by what feminism is today, but that doesn't right. mean that the feminists of today are, are wrong. 
That's oh. right. And things change. That's right. And I say it all the time, even in the trans community. That's why I said trans umbrella is not transsexual. And we need to define these two things. A transsexual, a transgender activist or a transgender person is not the same as a transsexual person. We need to define these. So, so a feminist of yesteryear, which are many are still around, and the feminists of today have different opposing views on many things. But does that not make them feminist? No, of course it makes them feminist. Does that not make that other person trans? No, they're trans, but they're trans with a different way of being, right? This is not an identity. I don't identify as trans. I identify as a man or a male. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So so transsexual to you is someone who feels gender dysphoria and then yes. acts on it through hormones and surgery. Is That's that right. Medicalization. So yes. so so I'm a medicalized trans person. But but you know, in the trans community, I'm considered true scum yes. or I'm considered derogatory or I'm considered old or I'm considered right a bigot. <laughs> I mean a, a turf. <laughs> all of all the things probably you get called, I get called as well. So, so when would so when does someone go from being someone who thinks that they've got issues with gender to being transsexual? Is it the day they take hormones? Is it the day they seek out hormones? Is it after ten years? Like, well, no, you are a transsexual if you have been diagnosed with gender dysphoria and you and you want to live in the binary and you want to transition to look and walk and be a woman or a man. But here's the key, you know you are not a man or a woman. You, you know that you are always in touch with your biology. As you know, I'm constantly talking about my biology and that I'm a biological female. That's again the difference between them and us. We acknowledge our biology and we acknowledge we have a disorder. So, so you're, you are always a transsexual. You just might not be diagnosed until later in life, yep. but that does not, not make you. A, so uh, what the problem I have is self ID, right? So now yeah. you don't have to have a diagnosis and you don't even have to have gender dysphoria. So there's my question. Why would anyone want to be trans? Why? Yeah. Yeah, not not genuinely trans, not go through hormones and that That's shortens right. your lifespan. And there's, That's right. of course, you know, there's, you, we can talk about how like some people will embrace that and give you special favors, but a lot of people would, would beat you up for that as well. Or That's right. some people, you know, get isolated from their families, their friend groups. Sure. It's a tough I mean, life. Well, 100% it's tough, and it's why I try to put that message out there to these young people who just think it's fun and games and joy and trans joy and trans, you know, whatever the heck they keep saying. Like, I'm like, no, stop. This is not joy. This is a, a means and a way to move forward in your life because you're having problems and you can't live the way you're living. And you move, it's like getting sober or getting, you know what I mean? You you find this connection with, this helped me. This this is a, a, a I don't want to say crutch, but a step to help me get to the next level of a better life. And that's what I don't see with this new trans agenda. I don't see them trying to show a better life. They're trying to, they're, they're showing anger and they're showing p misogyny and they're showing homophobia and they're, they're showing so many things that we net this, that is not trans. So I don't understand why they're, why they're doing that, right? Transsexual people always just sort of did their thing, tried to get as much this way as we could and then move back in the world. We don't want to be noticed. They tend to sort well, of want to be noticed. I mean, there must have been a, t so you started your journey at 28, obviously long before that you knew, but 28 was when a doctor affirmed you. Yes. But there must have been times between age 28 and whenever, like, before you passed, where you were yeah. angry when people didn't see you as a man, totally. or you were angry at the system that yep. had rejected you for so long. I mean, some of it's got yep. to be natural, right? Some of this anger. A hundred percent. It's why I say, and why I talk to the young people, like, of course you're going to get misgendered. You look like a girl. I dealt with it forever. So not to say just because I dealt with it, you have to deal with it, but that's the reality of being a trans person. If you don't let these people understand the realities of being, do you know that I still get misgendered? 
people still call me she, but you know, they're doing it with the intention of yes. being mean. I'm but talking. what I'm trying to teach people is that you will always be misgendered as a trans person. I don't care how many laws you pass. I don't care how many things you try to tell somebody. People are just automatically going to call you she and he if you look that way. So so do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pushing against them because they're creating more problems than we need to have. If no, you know, most people respect me, okay? They don't misgender me and they don't have... I'm trying to show the world a different view of a trans person and that we don't hate you and that I don't want to take your space and that I'm not a misogynist. <laughs> I actually care about women's rights. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't think many people think you're a misogynist. I think people think trans women are, mis some of them think yeah, trans women are misogynists, right. which is obviously a, a, a huge shame to the, almost all of them who are aspiring to be women themselves. They would uh, never think of themselves as misogynist, you know. That's right. um, but then I, I actually think it's the non-binary activists that are more trans, uh, not misogynist. Yes. Misogynistic. Right. Yep. Uh, and, and, and the yeah. AGP, right? We don't talk about AGP trans people. So I also want to remind people this. A new faction of trans women came into this space, okay? Those women are not like me are transsexual women. Those are women who have a fetish. Those are men, biological men, who have a fetish of being a woman, which who cares? I really don't care and nobody should care. But the problem is, is that now they're sort of trying to integrate themselves into this into this space when they're not like us. And they're the ones who are causing a lot of the problems. They're the ones who are fetishizing women, being mean to women, saying trans women are women, that they're biologically women, that they can get pregnant, that they can get their parents. Those yeah. are not real trans people. Those are what we call AGP or fetishizing sort of women space. And this is what's causing the problem. Yeah. And it it it's what's causing, I'm sure you'll know, it's caused a lot of problem in Scotland and was actually the start of JK Rowling's uh, downfall. Right. She lives in Scotland. Um it's Disgusting. it's so stressful for people uh like myself. Of course, for you in a different way, but for people like myself that just are very anxious about always being nice. I know. Because it's. <laughs> I would be so upset if when I'm 70, I look back and I'm on the wrong side of history. I really just want to be a good person. I know. You know, I know we all do. We all how do. do you, how do you um, live with sometimes just being a bit tough, you know, when you well, want to just be a nice person? But I am a nice person, but sometimes what happens is this, is that sometimes I have to lay the law down. It's like being a dad, right? Like I'm a good dad. I'm an actual dad. I have a kid. And sometimes I'm the awesome super dad, right? Who's <laughs> like, woo, let's go get ice cream, dude. You played a great soccer game. And sometimes I'm that no, 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 no. It ain't happening that way, kiddo. Like go to your room, but you know, actually I have a good candy. Barely, rarely gets in trouble. But that being said, do you understand what I'm trying to say now is I'm a nice person and I care about everybody. But sometimes when reality becomes something else, I have to step up to the plate because not only for my own self, right? I'm putting my air mask on is what I sort of kind of say, right? In the airplane, they always yeah. tell you to put your air mask on first because you can't help anybody else. So right now what I'm doing is I'm putting my air mask on and because I see a huge problem about to explode that will also affect me, not only you. So because of that, I'm looked down upon as a mean or transphobic or, but all of those things are just gaslighting. So you sort of have to understand and look at uh, and try to navigate how they act and how they act is they try to gaslight us and they try to sort of make us spin out so that maybe we're being wrong or maybe we're not nice or maybe we're transphobic. I know exactly what they're doing. So mm -hmm. I think that's the message I'm trying to give to you out there, people who aren't trans, who are trying to be good and trying to be allies. I'm telling you, you can't always be an ally to people who are not being honest to you and you need correct information. And I'm trying to give you all correct information so that maybe you don't hate all trans people because it's becoming that space. People are starting to hate all of us now and think we're all the same and they don't want any of us to exist. And that's scary to me. That is scary, but it's also, um, I can't support that. I can't say, oh, just because some 15 year olds on TikTok are being ridiculous, right. that right. justifies laws going through or bullying and stuff. You know, like, yeah. um, there's always going to be 
predominantly conservatives that actually really like when they see a 15 year old go crazy on TikTok because they can use that to spread a message. That's right. Like, and that's kind of where that's some right. of my anxiety comes from because yeah. first of all, if I had had a TikTok when I was 13, there would be some really embarrassing shit online <laughs> that you know, would make me really self-conscious. Like, totally. it's, it's unfair. But, but second of all, in a world of 7 billion, there's always going to be some people shouting loud, stupid stuff. And if we use that to represent everyone, that doesn't get us anywhere. And I do sometimes worry that our discourse on transgenderism is just hugely um, compromised by like cringe culture or reaction videos, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's right. No, uh, you're, 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 you're saying everything I believe. And this is the problem. The people who are representing trans now. So, so I guess I would, I could use the example of what if there was a bunch of crazy women who are representing women and you're like, what women don't yeah. act like that. And women aren't like that. And you're like feeling very upset because they are representing you. This is the problem with representation. Yeah, happens, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. And it's why I tell everyone, I do not represent the trans community. I've said it from day one, since I've always been on the internet, I do not represent a community. I represent a person who has an experience that is part of a community, totally different. I don't speak for anybody else. They are speaking for me. And that is not because everything they're saying is I, I disagree with. You, you so, so the problem is, is they have a higher voice than me. They have a bigger voice than me. And they're connecting with the people that they want to connect with. I'm connecting with the people I want to connect with. But because it's not my community, I'm considered an outlier. And I'm considered a transphobe and, a, and whatever else. You know, I support JK. Rawling, in fact, and she's very nice to me and she sends me nice little, you know, tidbits on X. And I feel very much that everything she said is perfectly in alignment with female empowerment and that it was not in one well, not one iota of what she said is transphobic. And mm -hmm. every time I ask the community, show me, they block me. Yeah, that says to me that, nope. They do not have, she's never been transphobic. She is not transphobic. And I find it really kind of sad that they went after her. She's a very important woman in this world. And she's done a lot of great things for women and kids and people. And it's disgusting that they did that to her. Do you think it's getting a little much? Like now when I look on her Twitter, it, she does seem a little obs obsessive. Do you blame her? Well, I, I don't. don't. I don't blame, don't blame her. her. Nope, nope. Yeah. I, I don't think people realize the amount of hate that woman got. I mean, you you try it. Uh, not, nobody I could survive it. it. Nobody could survive it. In fact, right. I got a lot of hate from this community. I had to take a ma major break because it was horrifying. So, and I got it that much compared to what she got. And can you imagine all her friends, people that were in movies with her turned on her and it's ho it's horrifying. First off, even if you disagree with JK, even if you disagree, none of that was warranted. And none of what you did to that woman is okay with me. Even if we dis disagree on what she said, she is entitled as a human and a woman to have every kind, every amount of what comes out of her mouth. She's 100% entitled to it, whether you like it or not. So I don't understand why everybody else can say things, but <laughs> JK Rowling is a transphobe. It's a, it's a bunch of crap. It really is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and like, um, I, I, there would be some things, I, I don't always agree with the way she responds to arguments, because I, sure. I think sometimes it's petty. And I wouldn't, yeah. I, I read her essay and I didn't agree, I agreed with half, okay. I'd say, and disagreed with half. But sure. um, I, I, do, I do just think that the way that people reacted was, was really unkind. Because she gross. wasn't actually being unkind. Nope. She was she just was raising not. her, she was just saying a thought, she wasn't <laughs> saying she disliked anyone. She never said that. And also, what world do we live in? What world do we live in now where people can't have a different opinion than someone else? I, 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 do you know how dangerous that is? Do you yeah. know what they did to her is so, again, take out what she said, but what the actions of this community and, and allies did to her is, it, the problem with those kinds of things is that won't be the first. No. And that opens a floodgate of people to attack other people and call them transphobes and get them canceled. The best thing that happened was J.K. Rowling. And want to know why? Because she never got canceled. And she just came back as a fighting. I don't, I'm telling you, 
I stand by everything that that woman, I might not agree with it, but I stand by the fact that she keeps pushing because in order for us to get back to some semblance of normalcy, we have to push back on those people because if you don't, they're going to take over everything and me and you aren't going to be able to have these conversations. Hmm. So uh, actually one thing she wrote in her essay, so it was very over, her essay, um, what people really ran with was that she was anxious about men going into women's bathrooms. And okay. people then disagreed whether that was transphobic or not. But something that I read that was just a line in her essay that really intrigued me, but okay. just wasn't really picked up on, was, was when she talks about why are so many more women or, or girls transitioning to men than ever before and That's in much right. higher numbers than the, right. than the opposite. And I was wondering, right. obviously, this is your experience. Could you maybe speculate well of course i can and why i'm sitting here today and why i keep my voice in the arena i care about these young people it is sick this is a whole this is not easy again i might make it look easy (laughs) but i have to wake up every morning knowing that i'm actually not a man i'm actually a, a female and every day that's on my brain even if it's even if it's subconsciously back here it's still on my brain so this idea that you're just gonna magically transition a 10 year old into a boy who's a girl who says she's a boy is insane and absurd child abuse wrong it doesn't work we know it so why do we have a 4,000% increase in young girls, not boys, young Mm. girls, which JK is very right about this. Why do we have this? So I have to look at it as well. Somebody who as a child felt like a boy, right? And I was Mm. a tomboy and I, and I, you know, I didn't struggle by the way. I didn't struggle. I basically just found my space in the world as a tomboy. And that's because there was no social media and I kind of had to just do my thing. And it was natural. We Masculine girls have always been part of the world, but, but now we're telling masculine girls that they're boys and that they can change their sex. That's what JK is saying. She's saying, why are these young girls in massive amounts deciding that they hate their female bodies, they wanna remove their breasts and they wanna become boys? Why is, why is that? And, and, and so I think it's a valid question. Why is that? Well, because young girls have always seen boys as having an easier life. It, it's a real thing. I thought of it too. Yeah. And so they think for some reason that being a girl is going to be harder or that. And, and there's a lot of stuff. And then we have social media, TikTok, telling all these young kids, woo, become trans. Your whole life will be better. They're doing that. They're dancing around with no top, with scars, you know, woohoo. Like, I'm like, What? That is like going like this, come over here. You'll be better as a boy. So JK is a hundred percent right. And, but how come nobody can answer it? How come nobody can answer her? And when she just asks a basic question, why is this happening? And then people give these false answers like, well, it's because it's more accessible now. Uh, I don't really think that's the reason why, because I transitioned 30 years ago and nobody else transitioned when I did. All the gay women, nobody, okay? Mm -hmm. Now they're all doing it today. So if you have gender dysphoria, you have gender dysphoria. It's not something that is, you know, all of a sudden in, you know, 1996. You would have have transitioned sooner if someone had let you. Like there were no, not necessarily so. Not necessarily so. I do not believe that. But but I can't say that. And here's what I want. I'm being very honest with you. I can't tell you whether or not I would have transitioned at 20 or 19. I can't tell you that because I actually did enjoy being a gay woman. And I was enjoying my life as a gay woman. I just knew deep down that I felt more like a man or wanted to be a man, if that makes sense. But but here's the problem that I also have today. All these trans influencers, like, if I had the opportunity to transition at 10, I would have. You know, <laughs> you can't say that because it's not necessarily, we can all say, right? You could say to me right now, you wished you had done something at 15 that you didn't. Yeah. And you, you might have done it when you were 15, but that's not saying you would have done it. Hmm. So what were the advantages to you of being 28 before you transitioned? Mm. Brain growth, number Brain growth. one. Okay. Maturity, number two. Not that I'm actually a very mature person because I'm not. So I'm just, 60. Yeah. <laughs> but that being said, a maturity, understanding the pros and cons, even though when I did it, we didn't have 
the doctor telling me so much the pros and cons because there were no there was not very many people like me so i sort of had to do it on a sort of chance but i think i was able to do it as an adult and i can't blame anybody for this space except myself and that's what i'm trying to say these kids are making their parents make the choice for them and you can't let your parent make this choice for you that's unfair to the parent because what if at 20 you decide you're not trans and who are you going to blame you're going to blame your parents yeah but i mean there's it's i think some parents are, are really pushed into corners where they're being told um my child your child is going to kill themselves if that's they right. don't or they're being told regardless of what you call your child at home, they have the right to be called something different in all these spaces. <sighs> I mean, like, um, wow. what, what would be your advice to, so so obviously some of these children are genuinely trans and sure. we both are in complete agreement with that, but what would sure. be your advice to a parent that just is of a, of a liberal mind, so they are open-minded to the idea that people are trans, but they just mm -hmm. genuinely do not see it in their kid at all. How can right. a parent like that help guide their child through it to the right Great. conclusion, whatever that may be. That's such an excellent question. And what I always, because I get a lot of parents contacting me. My kid is trans, right? They came home from school and they're trans. That's how I know it's indoctrination. Number one. Number two, you don't say you're trans. You say, I feel like a boy or I feel like a girl. That's how I also know it's indoctrination because the language, right? You're not trans. You just want to be a boy or you just want to be a girl. So, so what I always say to parents is, first off, take a deep breath. <laughs> Secondly, you need to get this kid into therapy therapy okay and i do not can i do not believe in affirmation therapy i believe in an actual real don't even take them to an lgbtq therapist take them to an actual uh, adolescent therapist who will give them long term therapy until they can figure out whether or not they really have you can't diagnose dysphoria in one session that's impossible number 2 a lot of these young people are going through puberty so a lot of things are changing for them so i i would say the most important thing is don't lose your child to this ideology and in the way you're going to lose your child is just by saying no and that's immediately going to push your child into those, those groups on Facebook and TikTok who will tell your child to leave the family because that's what they do. And then the child bails on you and then you're you have no. So so really just kind of try, even if you don't believe in trans, trying to understand your what's going on with your child and what friends they're hanging out with, where they're talking, who they're talking to. Are they being influenced? But number one thing, therapy. So therapy, like, what would you say, um, say I have a 12 year old, um, yeah. I personally think this is a phase, but they want to be called Charlie. Sh should yeah. I call them Charlie? Is that fair enough? No, no. See, that's a great, that's a great uh, example because my parents called me Buck when I was a little kid, right? And, yeah. and, and on some level they socially transitioned me, but I was still Laura. So I would go back and forth and when I had to go to school, is that, so I kind of dealt with these two names. My parents made it into a sort of game and my parents made it into sort so Laura wasn't bad. But and Buck wasn't good. They sort of just it sort of coexisted together. To, to, so so again, my point being is, don't make the kid angry and don't act like no, this is all weird. Say okay, you know, well, who cares about calling him Charlie? Some people would tell me that that's not good, Buck, because you're gonna make them trans. I'm like, if they're trans, they're already trans. You're not making them. But my own opinion is, they're probably not. They're probably more not than are. This is a rare condition, right? Yeah. This isn't, that's why I'm telling you, trans identity is not transsexualism. It's an identity. So maybe your kid is just wanting to have an identity uh, to fit in, right? To, so these are the things we have to navigate. What are the kids going through? What's happening? The medication should never be given to a kid until they're 18. Mm -hmm. I put my foot down on that one. No um, way. What about, um, what about surgery? 18 as nope. well? That's right. None of it. No, it's all irreversible anybody who tells you any of it's reversible they're lying to you in your face and are you going to believe a 30 plus year transition person or are you going to believe the guy who just transitioned a year ago yeah but i mean like um so i actually i i don't feel comfortable with um putting under 18s on hormones uh, uh, and there's probably a few exceptions nope. where it's so yeah. obvious but yeah. as a general yeah. rule but then i do feel sorry for a 19 year old trans woman who's six foot four and just covered in hair and a thick beard and stuff. I know, I know. 
but that's, that's the called, journey. Ready? This is the journey of being a trans person. Deal with it. If you actually need to transition, you will make. I know so many trans women who de- who transitioned as adults. They look amazing and beautiful. It can be done. So don't tell me it can't be done. I transitioned at 30. I went through female puberty. Do I look like a female to you? No. <laughs> not a good looking one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ugly ass woman. <laughs> but that being said, I did not transition to be an ugly woman. I transitioned yeah. to be a man. But that so so you see what I mean? But but this is a this is work. We're telling these kids that's not work. And we're also telling these kids that that um you can change your sex. I never change my sex. We're lying to them. Also, what if they change their mind? Yeah. I can never go back to living as a woman, ever, yeah. ever. So that's why it has to be an adult choice. It has to be a choice that they can understand the consequences. And I'm sorry that you're six one and you have hair on your face and now you're transitioning to a woman. That's the whole point of transsexualism. It's it's something that is there. You have to deal with the pros and cons of it. It's not an easy ride. And I think it's important that we understand how important puberty is. You cannot take that away from a human. I don't care what you are. Puberty is literally going from a, from a little boy or girl into a, an adult. That's what it is. So when you take that out, you're taking out so many important aspects of being a healthy human being that that trans person is going to suffer possibly not maybe mentally, but they're going to suffer physically from that. So do you not believe in non-binary or you just don't believe it's got anything to do with you? I don't believe it has anything to do with me. I, it's not that I don't believe, of course, I have friends who are non-binary, but it's not trans. It's, it's an identity choice. It's like, it's like deciding that, you know, that you want to be a queer, right? That's a choice. So, so, so you want to be queer, not gay. Queer is different than gay. Okay. So, so gay is not, you don't choose to be gay. Gay, you are born that way, 100%, just like I was born this way. But these new identity, people are identifying as queer. They're choosing that label. So it's exactly the same as non-binary. So I'd like to ask the question of what makes a non-binary person think they're transgender when they're not even transitioning? They're just choosing a pronoun. I, I have a friend who's non-binary. Um we've clashed a bit before but I do try basically to understand that just because I don't understand it doesn't sure. mean real. but the way that they would describe it is so that they were born male now they mm-hmm. identify as non-binary they would describe it as if I woke up tomorrow as a woman I would be as indifferent in this body as I am right now in a male body and, okay which fair enough but on the other hand fair that will enough. never happen so you can never no. test that theory <laughs> that's right you know there you go there you like, go they they make so i've heard so many different definitions of non-binary that's how i know it's sort of it's made up it's androgyny and it's gender fluid it's 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 been around forever these people think they invented non-binary all they did is change the name from androgyny to non-binary it's been around forever i used to get people used to be so confused with me are you a girl are you a boy i totally lived in that space before transitioning this is not new they're just making it so as if it's like this thing it's not that it's not that fucking big deal people you're choosing to be non-binary you don't want to be a woman and you don't want to be a man big deal go for it but that's not trans trans is somebody who has a mental disorder who needs to live in a binary space there is no such thing as a non-binary transsexual that is not that is not a thing (laughs) You you see? So I think if they were more honest, they're also not being honest with us. They're not being honest that they're choosing to live in this space, right? And then I don't know why they want to be connected to trans. That's the part that is sort of bizarre to me, that that they're the ones who speak over me and speak over all of us in our community. They're the ones who have completely co-opted the trans space. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, but so you just think it should just be a separate category? Yeah. Yeah. But... Lots of transsexuals disagree with you, I guess. That's okay. I, they invited them in, right? 
I guess. No, I think anyone could disagree with me. I have no issues with that at all. My wife disagrees with me. <laughs> so I don't have any issues with disagreement. This is what I'm trying to show the world. I disagree with so much that's going on in the trans space. It doesn't make me anti-trans. It makes me say, hey, wait, I have a different opinion here. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as a community and as humans. The fact that we're shutting down any dialogue because it hurts your feelings, Example, JK Rowling, mm -hmm. how, how is, how is, how is, how is that? Uh, okay. How is that moving us forward? Because you don't like what she says. We're going to silence her. Oh, that's a really great idea. Look what it caused. It yeah. caused, uh, what it caused is a direct split between us and them. And that's not, you know, that's not creating any solutions. I'm a solution based person. How do me and you create a solution so that we can live in the world together? It's not that we're constantly going like this at each other. So what do you think the future is? Do you think that the pendulum swinging back or do you think we've got things are going to get a lot worse before they no, get better? I think it, I see a light. I see a light. And I think because you and I are having these conversations, I see a light. I see people starting to see the that we've had the wool pulled over our eyes, that we have been manipulated and gaslit by a trans agenda. And uh, I, for one, as a transsexual, will not be part of that. And I, I think by all of us, speaking out you know then we're starting to see that hey wait a minute maybe this isn't what people don't like to be told what to do you and i both know that I'm, if i see a man right there uh, and that's what i see you're gonna say sir i'm yeah. sorry if it hurts your feelings but that's the real we have to get back to some basis of reality in order for people to understand that something weird is going on so now we're all pushing back i'm not going to call you she or he or Zay or Zer or clown, whatever the heck that is. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. Unless I see you as a woman and there's some respect towards me as well, we're gonna, we're gonna have a problem with you telling me I have to call you they, them, Z, Zer. I'm just not gonna do it. So, so you think um, we're gonna reach a stage where, um, like what was the, what was the best point in history for you so far? Um, was there a time when you felt like we're now in a good space or things are, are going to get better or yep. are, are maybe despite yep. all the problems we have right now, we're, we're still at the most progressive stage? Well, I mean, I can tell you that prior to all of this trans insanity, which started to happen like 10 years ago, oh my God, living as a trans person in the world was amazing. I traveled the world, friend. I've been everywhere speaking about my transition with so much love from people. I mean, people would come up to me after my talks and say, you know, I used to think people like you are weird. <laughs> and they're like, you're so cool, dude. Let's have a beer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just... I know because I actually lived in the world out there and walked the world as a trans person and nobody was crappy to me. Now people hate me who probably thought I was okay before. So because of that, I think now people are pretty tired of the insanity going on. And I see that we are progressing more now because we're starting to have the conversation of what's the difference between somebody who identifies as trans and somebody who truly believes that it's a medical condition. And I think what's happening in the trans community is more people like me are starting to speak up and we're getting, we're taking our community back from those people. We're not, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. It's ruining, it's killing all of our rights. Mm. I mean, there's got, if you had to say one good thing that's come from the the transgender movement and since the internet or since would you, could you pick one could you give them any credit yeah i can give them a little credit i would say that one thing that has come from it is that we're exposing mental health and how important mental health care is and you know this is a mental problem i have and i'm hugely uh, advocate for mental health care. And I still go to therapy 30 something years later. But I think what it has exposed is that we need to really get into mental health care before anything else. I think we're all suffering, not just trans people, but many, many people are suffering from depression, anxiety. And that's not that's not relegated to LGBTQ. It's it's pretty much the world. And so I think that's one of the best things that has come out of my trans movement is we're showing how easily it is to manipulate people in their thought process and that 
that might be wrong because we're not talking about mental health care. Many of these kids just need mental health care. They don't need to be shooting testosterone. They need to be. So I would say thank you trans activists for bringing to the forefront how important mental health care is and how much more that is needed than any medication or any surgeries ever. We we need mental health care for these young people. Mm. You just disagree on the specifics of what it means. I believe in what what meant affirmation therapy is not mental health care. So what mm-hmm. I mean is mental health care, what I mean is long term therapy to get down to your trauma. Most of these young people are dealing with trauma and then yeah. they've never even talked about their trauma. And how do they even know they have trauma? They're living their trauma out through being trans or non-binary. Yeah. And not just therapy, like just living a good life, a good friend group, healthy uh healthy school setting, healthy home That's right. Life, right? That's right. That's right. And, and we're missing that now. We're indoctrinating kids into thinking they can be trans. And we're indoctrinating kids into this weird pronoun space. And we're indoctrinating kids into believing they can be whatever they want to be. You cannot be what I've never changed my sex. And this is why the trans community pushes against me because I keep going, you're telling a kid they can change their sex when they can't. You're lying to them. They're never, what happens when they get to be 21 and they're a trans guy like me and they still have a vagina and they go to hang out with the dudes in the gym, but they got a vagina. They don't have a penis. Now what? Did you tell them? Mm -hmm. You see, people aren't looking at that. I am because I know the uncomfortability of my body when I'm around a bunch of dudes. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, we're not being honest to these young people at all. So my final question Obviously, um, our conversation today has been all about uh, your personal journey and transgenderism, transsexualism, <laughs> which um, I've really enjoyed. But I also always feel it's a little bit of a shame when someone gets like categorized and then that's what they end up talking about. So much, <laughs> I know it's you true. Know? It's Cause true. Um, it, like, of course you say, I, I think about it every day, but it's still one of a thousand things that you think about every day in your life. Yeah. Yeah. So totally. I guess my final question is, what do you want to be known for and what do you want to stand for outside of this aspect of your identity? Excellent question. So what I stand for is humanity. OK, humility. Humility is one of the most important things at everyone. And we're missing humility. <laughs> I want to be known for building bridges and finding solutions and not with just trans, because this isn't just a trans problem. We have wars going on. We have religious people against each other. We have genocide actually happening. We have many bad things happening in this world that I think what I'd like to be known as is trying to get people to start to understand how building bridges and trying to coexist in this world together will help us as humans be able to walk the earth together. Me and you don't have to walk on the same side of the street, by the way, Kate. Me and you can walk on the same street, but on the opposite sides. And we can wave to each other, but we never have to ever interact with each other. And that's what I think I want the world to see, that the only way you and I are going to be able to live in this world is by being able to understand that different people live here, but let me live my life in peace and I'll let you live your life in peace. And I think that is probably one of the most important parts of my message. Nice. I will. I can't do anything but support that book. (laughs) (laughs) Right on. That's a real thing. Like I, I, I just don't understand. We can't be so angry at the world. We need to come back and everybody's missing out and many people are dying because of it. It's gross. And what are your ambitions outside, like uh, outside of this? Like, is there anywhere you still want to travel? Is there a business you still want to start? Obviously, you've well, got it, a son to raise. That's obviously a big part of your yeah, life. Yeah, it, it is. I'm, you know, I'm actually looking into fostering a, a kid here in in Los Angeles, and maybe my wife and I will have another kid. I'm really into the, you know, I'm coaching uh, what we call soccer here, football. Um, you know, I just really, I'm enjoying my time with young people. I'm, you know, I have a little boot camp where I bring the kids over and we work out a little bit and teaching them. You know, I don't know why I just got into really being sort of a mentor for kids who don't have masculine people in their in their lives. A lot of kids 
kids don't have dads. So I think right now, you know, I have a couple businesses. I work in adult space over here and, you know, I create products that help trans men have a healthier life, like, like different things for their bodies. And, and mostly at my YouTube channel is really growing tremendously because I'm bringing other voices on. So I'd like to give other people opportunities to speak and talk a, about things. And I have a lot going on, but I think my most important thing is I'd like to retire in five years on the beach here <laughs> in my rocking chair <laughs> and I'm all good. <laughs> but you'll be busy five years before then. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give up. Just so you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm not. I'm going to continue to speak my mind and, it, you know, I'm going to continue to be hated and I'm going to continue to be loved. And that's just part of doing, I think, on some activism on, on some level. Thank you so much for talking to me, Buck. Thanks, Kate. I've Thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Go ahead.